Christ living and divine bride. You need a strong east wind. You need a strong east wind to blow out your preconceived ideas. You need a strong east wind to blow out your religion. You need a strong east wind to blow out the doctrine of the scribes and Pharisees, which still possess your soul because you've not allowed the Holy Ghost to move in you and set you free. A ministry with a vision. A ministry on the move. A ministry established by our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think what God wants to do in his people is make his supernatural Holy Ghost fire and power clear to our sight, clear to our mind, so that there is no doubt in our spiritual creation who God is. I'm a for Christ Love International Ministry. A ministry of the ministry built on a plan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are truly excited to be here tonight to worship and praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I love Wednesday, Wednesday nights because we get to come into the house of the Lord and worship his holy name. All right. Well, we're going to get started with service and we're going to pray first. But I want you to grab somebody's hand and we're going to pray together and we're going to believe that tonight God is going to have his way. He's going to move in a mighty way tonight. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, that you give us, Lord, to come in this place, God, and to worship your holy name. Father, as we stand here, God, we pray for the person next to us, God, the person on our right and the person on our left, God, that you would bless them, that you would move upon them, that the Holy Ghost would have its way tonight, God. Oh, we come, God, expecting from you, hungry for you, Father, to move tonight, Father. God, I pray right now, Father, any heavy anything that is not like you, anything that is contrary to love, joy, and peace, God. Father, we take authority over everything, every element of flesh in the name of Jesus. And Father, we come to you, oh God, wanting you tonight. Father, you may Manifest yourself tonight. Father, we hunger for you, God. We love you, and we come to worship your holy name. Father, I pray that you would move. Father, we thank you for every time you have moved and you have uh, had glory, that you filled this place with your presence and your glory. Father, we honor you tonight, God. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Where well, are you ready to praise the Lord tonight? Are you ready to lift up the name of Jesus? Are you ready to cast everything down? Everything that you're going through, everything that you're facing, everything that's set in front of you, it's time to praise the Lord. Let's give him all the praise tonight. Amen. know about you, but I've got an auto satire. I've got a reason to praise. I've got a reason to shout. I've got a reason to dance a little bit. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet. I felt, I felt the spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came yeah, through. Yeah. Church was on fire in the Holy Ghost too. From the 
top of my head to the sole of my feet. I felt the spirit moving all over me. I've got to praise and i got to let it out. i got to praise. Do you got to praise? i got to praise. i got to praise and i got to let it out. i got to praise. Sing that out. If you got to praise, just shout. i got to praise. i got to praise and i got to let it out. i got to praise. Do you got it? Do you got it? Yeah, 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 yeah. One more time, say. I got a praise. I got a praise, and I gotta let it out. I got a praise. I got a praise. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire, and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head. All of my feet, I felt the spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came. Church was on fire in the Holy Ghost. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet, I felt the spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire in the Holy Ghost. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet, felt the spirit moving all over me. The top of my head, the sole of my feet, the top of my head, the sole of my feet, the top of my head, the sole of my feet. I felt the spirit moving all over me. The top of my head, the sole of my feet, the top of my head, the sole of my feet, the top of my head, the sole of my feet. I felt the spirit moving all over me. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet, the top of my head, the sole of my feet. Jeremiah said it's like, let me hear you, Jeremiah said it's like, but shut up in my bones, shut up in my bones, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my bones, Jeremiah said it's like, but Jeremiah said it's like, but Jeremiah said it's like, but shut up in my bones, shut up in my bones, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my bones, Jeremiah said it's like, Shut up in my bones, 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 shut up in my bones. I feel the joy of the Lord in this place. Hey, I feel the joy of the Lord in this place. And I need to know if there's somebody today that's going to shake themselves loose for the Spirit of God. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Hey, hey. you should have been there. You should have been there. You should have, you, you should have, you, you should have, yeah, you should have, oh, 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 you should have, you, you should have, you, you should have, you, you should have been there when I came to church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. from the top of my head, sole of my feet, felt the spirit moving all. Go ahead. You should have been there. I came through. Church was on fire. Holy Ghost, too. The top of my head to the sole of my feet. I felt the spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire. The sole of my feet. Felt the spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on 
on fire with the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yes. Whoa. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. Do you gotta praise? Do you gotta praise? Do you gotta praise? Woo! I gotta, I gotta praise, praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. I gotta, I gotta praise, praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. On the inside, on the inside, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel the spirit of God.
I'm excited again to hear this vessel speak. And it is uh, such an honor to be here and to be able to be a part and see uh, God just bring up this woman of God and just see all the things that God's getting ready to do in her life. I'm so excited. I'm glad that I get to be a part of it. I know that every time I am around her when she is operating and doing something in the kingdom of God, I just sit back and I think, man, she just, it's, I, I just love the way she handles the youth and what she has done with the youth. I, as a parent, I am so thankful to God that we have got a youth pastor. Amen. All you parents out there, amen. Amen. A youth pastor that has done tremendous things with the youth. I've seen such an increase in them. And uh, I'm just so grateful uh, to the Lord for this vessel. So I'm without further hesitation. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the one who's going to break the word of God tonight. Oh, and MIT. Aaron Moss. All right, who's happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Woo! I'm telling you what, that mime was hit. Praise and worship was hitting. That mime was hitting. I'm excited. I feel like the table has been set. So uh, let's go before the Lord in order of prayer. We're going to get into it. Father God, God, we come before you, God, humbled and grateful for this ministry, God, for these people. Father God, I pray that I would completely get out of the way. And God, any words that I speak, let them be led of you. God, let this message encourage someone else, God, as it has encouraged me. And I ask that the flow of your anointing would be poured out upon your people, Father God. We give you glory and honor. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all may have to see with the shout. Okay, so I'm so excited to be up here. It's always such a an amazing honor and privilege to address the people of God. I never get tired of it. I never would. I know it's part of my calling. Um, so of course I have to thank our chief apostle and our apostle for this tremendous opportunity. Thank you both so much. You guys are incredible. And of course, as always, I love to address our whole leadership. Thank you all for your love and support and your words of wisdom and mentorship. Because <laughs> I've been mentored by each and every one of you at different times and different levels. So thank you all. I love you guys. Um, okay, so as I like to do, I'm going to share how this message came to be. Um, although be it, didn't know it was going to be a message, but hey, God has the glory. He's going to have his way. So <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys remember back in February, it was actually the night I got to speak with my amazing friend and fellow MIT, Zoe Jackson. Um, and we preached, but before that, our apostle got up and kind of shared like a little mini message. And it was incredible. If you were here in February, and I know for a few months we referenced it, but she talked about stretching. So we're going to talk about stretching tonight. And I am also in the midst of living this message. So, hey, we will always be stretching and trying to go further in the Lord. So we're going to talk about stretching tonight. Um, and I want to read something that our apostle said. Um, and it's a quote that she uh, said. It um, okay For the next change to come, you have to experience a spiritual stretching. That was the first thing that she said. Um, and you have to be in the right time and season and know um, when that is. And it will not always be easy. <laughs> it will not always be what we expect or what we think, but we have to be able to get out of the way and let God be God. Amen? Um, and there are times where we want to run away from the stretching. Um, if you've ever done yoga, I know I kind of brought this up the last time I spoke, but if you've ever done yoga, sometimes it can push you to points that are not the most comfortable. They are very uncomfortable. They are very uncomfortable. Hope everybody's catching where I'm going. <laughs> the stretching sometimes is not always comfortable, but it's so good for your body. So think about if it's good for your body and keeps you agile and moving, how much more it is for your spiritual man. And uh, I want to read a little tale here about someone who was trying to avoid the stretching for a little bit. So go with me to Jonah. Jonah 1, and I'm going to be starting in verse Jonah 1 and 1, and it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amidity. First, first thing right there, let's just address 
the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Do we avoid the word of the Lord? Our prophetess just spoke a phenomenal message on Sunday, and I know it was stepping on some toes, on everyone's toes. And um, we think about a lot of times, we, we talk about a season of great faith, and I believe stretching goes hand in hand with that. Um, but sometimes when the word of the Lord comes forth, we, we do what Jonah did, okay? And in verse two, it says, arise. This is what the Lord's saying. The Lord is speaking to Jonah. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee. He got out of Dodge. <laughs> he said, no way, that's not for me. I'm good. And it says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Oh, okay already not good sign be careful there's like a little think about the little cautionary uh you know that you see on the highways or the streets or whatever he fled from the presence of the lord oh no and i was like lord <laughs> have i done that have i fled from your presence in times past and current times sometimes the lord will speak to us and then we take off because we're like, nope, that's too much for me. I'm going to go this way. All right. And then continuing in three, it says, um, he, he uh, fled from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went into it to go with him onto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Notice it says from the presence of the Lord twice. That's kind of a sign to us. That whenever we're trying to avoid this season of stretching, we get out of the presence of the Lord. And uh, our prophetess really hit this home and said, you know, sometimes we think it, a season's going to be one thing. And then it turns out to be something completely different and unexpected. And sometimes when you're stretching, I know uh, sometimes you can, you know, get going. I can't do much, guys. I, the clothes I have on, you know what I'm saying? Um, and the Lord's like, maybe a little deeper. Let, let me get something here. Maybe a little more. And you're like, that's a little too much for me. I'm good. I'm going to flee. I'm going to cut the season off. I'm going to cut it short because I don't think I can handle it. And I run and flee from the presence of the Lord. Hear me. And now I'm going to jump to verse 17. And it says, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And those of you that know, you know, we know this story. Um, a lot of Christians are familiar with this story, especially here in RFC. Three days and three nights. And I think to myself sometimes, I'm not trying to judge Jonah or anything, because like we all have our we all have our things. Um, but the Lord was so serious about him getting. By the way, if you read up above, he was on the ship, and the ship. You know, the crew was like, no, we got to we got to cast you over like you. You got too much going on. Like they knew it was him. I was like, no, nah, we're not trying to deal with this drama. I'm shit. I'm casting you away. And the Lord prepared a ship because Jonah was trying to avoid the season of stretching. The season of great faith. How often, how many times does the Lord try to get us to do something, but we want to skirt it. And then he has to bring a big fish. And he's like, I guess since you didn't want to listen, now I have to be dramatic because you don't want to listen in the spirit because you are far away from my presence because you decided to flee. Now I have to prepare something even more grand, a grand gesture just to get your attention because you don't want to listen. Because we want to avoid, because we don't want to deal. Just saying. All right, so the Lord talked to me about being stiff and about being flexible. Y'all know I always have my points when I preach. I guess it's the pastoral calling in me. <laughs> I like to establish. Um, but being stiff, um, the definition that I found was not easily bent or changed in shape. Rigid. Rigid. So that means that God's trying to get you in a position and you're bucking against that because you're being stiff and rigid. But when you when you do yoga, like I would do more if I didn't have like these nicer clothes on, but 
but let's say, you know, you're doing a, a warrior one, okay? Um, you know what I'm saying? And you're trying to get in this position. Now, Apostle Jenny teaches all of us dancers. She's like, get a little deeper in there. Get a little, and because sometimes we're stiff, we're not quite as nimble, we're getting in the way, we become rigid. Go with me to Deuteronomy 9, and this is the Lord speaking. And I want to encourage you tonight not to be one of those people. You know, all throughout this week, I had to pray and ask God, don't let me become so hard and so proud in myself. I want to follow your voice, no matter where that may lead me, even if I don't understand or I don't see or I'm not sure. Um, so in Deuteronomy uh, 9 and verse 13, Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone, that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of the a nation mightier and greater than thou. I don't want to be in this group of people where God has to come and be like, okay, so they're just not listening. They're just not even trying to go with my spirit, with my word. So much so, again, a great level that God has to go to because people won't listen because in our flesh, we're very stubborn. And he says, I will destroy them and blot out their name, which means you will be forgotten. I don't want to be a part of a forgotten generation or a generation where he has to blot out my name because I don't want to listen, because I don't have enough faith, because I don't want to stretch, because I don't want to go any further, because it's uncomfortable to me, or I'm not sure, or I don't know. I don't want to be a part of that generation. But rather, I want to be a part of a generation, that enzyme generation that is called of his name. So, flexible. Let's talk about flexible. Quality of bending easily without breaking. So that means that you can move. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Tasha Willis, um, especially before she had her surgery. She's one of the like the most flexible people in the hips that I've ever seen. Like she can like do the craziest stuff. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty impressive. But she doesn't break, understand? There's times when God's trying to move us, trying to move us so far, and we think, I'm gonna break, I'm gonna break, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna make it, oh God, oh God. And he's like, just, just chill out. And what did our prophets talk about? Just trust me. You're not gonna break. In Jeremiah 18, I'm not gonna go there, but in Jeremiah 18, one through four, it talks about the potter's house. It's one of my favorite. I love the potter's house. And how often do we allow ourselves to be that clay on the potter's wheel? And even when it says it's marred, I hope I'm saying that right, which means like there's, um, it's disfigured or, you know, it's not put together cleanly. And it says the potter has to put some aside and add more water and move it and work it. But we don't allow God to move and work to add the washing of the word, the water, to move and make us. To add the spirit, a little bit of fire, because if you've ever done pottery, at the end, you have to put it in fire for it to solidify. Hear what I say? You have to put it in fire for it to solidify. So we don't allow the water, we don't allow the fire, we don't allow anything because we're so stiff-necked, because we are this generation that's talked about in Deuteronomy, because we don't want to listen. And we love God, I know we love God, but how, do you really love him past? And I'm asking myself that too. Y'all know me when I preach, it's always back at me. Always. That's what we've been taught here, good leader, it's always back at you. Do you love him enough? Do you trust him enough? And that's so much easier said than done. But something that my mom told me this week is he always has your best interests at heart. He knows what you have need of. He knows the season you need to be in. We have to remember that as the people of God. You know, I, it's funny, I wasn't even trying to have my message go along with our prophetess's message, but I pray it can be some type of an extension. <laughs> so not to be stiff or rigid to where you can't be movable or barely move, but flexible in the spirit of God to where it seems like you might break, but then you bounce right back. Okay. 
Um, so the Lord told me sometimes we've got the I got it attitude. Okay, so in yoga, um, there's times, and if you guys have ever stretched with Jenny, um, there's times when like, especially like floor movement stuff, which sometimes for me that the floor movement's more challenging because I you guys see me? I'm like the size of a 10 year old. Like my length is not very, like my dad jokes with me all the time and he puts up his arm to my leg because literally from his shoulder to my leg is the length of my leg. <laughs> a grown man, <laughs> just putting that in perspective. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, we, <laughs> um, but we got that I got it attitude. And there's this one move that we do on the ground. Again, I can't do it because I'm in this <laughs> little blazer. Um, but we get on the ground and if you ever have Jenny, sometimes she'll come and she'll push on your back just to get that deeper. And y'all that have been in the class, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you're like on the ground and your legs are spread open and you're kind of like, she's trying to get you to move flat like a pancake, if you will. If I give some of you a visual and sometimes she'll come push on your back and you're like, Ooh, I don't think. <laughs> but sometimes I know when there's been times, especially when I was younger. Like, I'm talking like 9, 10. And I used to be in yoga classes with Jenny. I would think, oh, don't come over here. I've got it, please. <laughs> like, I've got it. I'm good. Please don't come over here. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm like, no, please. Um, uh. But sometimes we have that with God, the I got it attitude. He's trying to stretch us and move us. But we're like, I've got it. It's okay. I don't need. And sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. And that's the thing that we have to get better about as the children of God, knowing when you're saying, I'm good, I've got it. And he's like, can you just move your hand, please? And let me do what I need to do so he can put his hand, a holy anointed new direction in your life so that he can lead and guide you and move you to the position that you need to be in. But we, we think like, I'm cool. It's all good. I don't need any help. Like, you are like how I was at nine years old. You're like, I got it. It's fine. But don't be, don't be so prideful. Don't be so arrogant. Humility is the key. Humility is the key. In the kingdom of God, you have to stay humble. And that is something that I have learned from our apostles. And that's something my parents, that's something I've always strove stro stro for, is to stay humble before the Lord. I never want my arrogancy or my flesh to get in the way. Humility will take you far in the kingdom of God. You have to, have to, have to stay humble, even when you don't know, even when the stretching seems like it's really rough. Okay, another quote from our amazing apostle. When you really learn how to stretch in the spirit, you're out of control. So we want to control everything. We want to keep our hands to it. We want to say, I got it. I'm good. I'm, it's okay. But are we willing to get to the place? To where we can lose control in the spirit of God. To where we can let go of our flesh, of our plans, of our ideas, of our agendas, of what we think is going to make us grow, of what we think is going to take us far. Are y'all with me out there? Are you here tonight? Are you willing to let go and lose control in the spirit of God because he has a plan for your life and something that he has set and something that he is building or do we get in our own way because we're scared or we're frightened or we're arrogant or we're prideful or flesh is running rampant? Will you get out of the way and lose control in the spirit of God? Will you? When it's raging and it's chaos and you have no idea, Will you lose control in the spirit of God? Will you allow yourself to get to that place? Or will you stay and let the king of control rule your life? Are you going to let him walk around so freely in your land? Or are you going to stand up and say, I will embrace the freedom of the spirit. I will flow in the anointing of God. Because God wrote this ministry, and that includes me in the palm of his hand. That includes me. Or do we let the king of control run rampant? Do we let that go? Our apostle talked about that. Don't let the king of control rule your life. It will kill your spiritual man. It will kill it. You have to let go. You have to stay flexible in God. Ryan.
Ryan, I know I brought this up one of the last times I preached. Ryan gave me a prophecy about always staying flexible. And that's the thing. God tries to give us more means. You know what I'm saying? Season of great faith, stretching. Stretching was back in February. Season of great faith, I think, was like the beginning of the summer, which was like in May or June. And God tries to forewarn us, and we don't listen, and we don't want to hear, or we do, and we think it's going to be one way. And we're like, cool, season of great faith, amen, God. I'm going to have your faith. I'm going to have trust in you. I'm going to stretch. God, you've got it. And then when it comes, you know, if you, again, in yoga, if you've ever had Apostle Jenny come up and do something to you that stretches you unexpectedly, and you kind of go like, ugh. You go rigid. That's what we do in the spirit. We're like, huh, whoa, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that. Hear me, I was not ready. You don't think you're ready, but he knows the time and the seasons and the place. He knows every single hair on your head. So just because you don't think you're ready, he knows that you're ready. He knows what he's called for you and the time and the place and the moment. We have to get out of the way. We have to get out of the way. And don't think, let it go. We have to let it go. We have to let go. You know, sometimes I like to think, we all do this as human beings. I like to think, I'm pretty free form. I'm pretty chill, which is, you guys, most of you know me, you've known me my whole life. I don't, whatever, but no, we are all flesh and blood, and there is a level of control that we all like to have, and we all, we all run with, and we're like, God, I'm, I'm going with you, I'm with you, and he's like, really, because you won't get your hand off the wheel. You seem to be, like, fighting me on this, and you're like, God, I got it. I mean, you got it. I'm letting you. And he's trying to grab your hand. And you're like, I'm letting you. And he's like, will you let go? <laughs> let go. Let go, I say to you. Okay. So we're going to talk. Um, breathing is such an important part of stretching. Um, all the time, and I know, again, I kind of brought this up last time I spoke. If you don't breathe, it can't get to your muscles, to your bones to your nervous system, you're kind of doing it like, it's kind of pointless, honestly. Like, you really can't get far. There have been times when Apostle Jenny has pressed on my back, and she's like, and breathe. And I'm like, <sighs> and it, I get a little deeper than I thought I could. But sometimes, in the Lord, we do this. You, you know you look foolish. Come, come on. But see, that's how we are in the spirit. We look like a fool. <laughs> we look foolish in the spirit because we're like, I'm, bre I'm, I'm breathing. Oh. <laughs> God, you got me. Oh. <laughs> but we need to breathe. Go with me to Genesis 2. We need to allow God to give us the breath of life. He is the one. When you breathe in and out in the spirit, him and his spirit and his word or what you're exercising or what you're breathing is what you're taking in and out. Or prayerfully, it should be. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the, life, the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. That's powerful. He breathed and the man became a living a living some of us walk around here half dead we're dying i know the church today is dying i know religion is causing like you know it's like almost like covering your mouth and nose and with that stuff i can't think of it but they put it in the movies they put chloroform thank you kayla they put it and then you just pass out <laughs> That's what religion is doing today. But I want to encourage you, people of God, RFC, that we need to become and be that living and breathing soul, that living and breathing organism, that living and breathing body, so that when he moves, we move. So we are in step with his word, in step with the spirit. 
Take it in. Oh, we're taking in the word, letting out the flesh. Taking in the spirit, letting out carnality. Taking in the word and the spirit, oh, letting out control. Because we want to move in step with God. It is so important to be in step with our Father. It's so essential. I literally just told our apostle the other day, I said, I want to be in the season of the Lord. And I meant that. I really want to be in the season of God. Because I love him and he's been there every time. Even when I didn't know and I didn't see and I was so confused or I was hurt or I couldn't find my way because I was in my way or flesh. But I've always searched for the season of the Lord. Let me be in your season. Let me be in your time. I never want to misstep. Any action I take anywhere I go, I want to be in his season because I don't want to become so rigid and so stuck in my ways. We get stuck in our ways. We get so used to things. We become creatures of habit. Jenny is one of, uh, excuse me, our apostle Jenny. She is one of the most, we're changing it up, we're switching things up, people I've ever met in my life. I Honestly, I don't know if I've met anyone that beats her. And I've met a lot of people in my life. I've worked a lot of places. I went to a lot of schools. And I've never met someone who's so like, Okay, we've been doing this for a while. That's old. And she'll tell you, quit. That's the old season. We're not doing that. And I'm, I mean, she'll be quick. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's amazing. Because I'm the type of person I'm like, you know what? If it's the same, cool. <laughs> but that's flesh. That is flesh. And I always pray, especially now in the season that I'm in, and God is showing me and taking me down new paths, that I always be, am a person who goes with the flow of his anointing. And I don't look like this. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the Lord told me, when you stretch, powerful things happen. When you stretch. And I remember Chief said it. I can't remember if it was the, um, it wasn't God's Freedom Nation. I believe it may have been X Level. He's taught a lot of amazing messages. Um, but he said that whenever... Basically, I'm paraphrasing, but whenever you grow in God, it doesn't just affect you, it affects those around you. Oh, what, what is it called? Blessing bomb. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, and when you stretch, powerful things, so it doesn't just affect you spiritually and positively, it affects those around you in a positive way. That's why it's so important to be in the right season of the Lord, because others can get encouraged and feel like, wow, they're doing it, I can do it too. Or they're in lockstep with you, and you're moving along together in perfect sync, and you're like, this is great, isn't this great? And I'm like, it's great for me, is it great for you? <laughs> I know I've had conversations in so many ways with so many of you, where I'm like, this is awesome, isn't this awesome? <laughs> like, we're in a great place, aren't we in a great place? So remember when you stretch, powerful things happen. Hold on to that, let's go to Matthew 12. So Matthew 12. And in verse 10, and um, Apostle Jenny, when she did her little mini message on this, uh, this topic, she uh, read this scripture, this passage. But I want to start in verse 10. It says, and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? And if you jump down with me to verse 13, this is Jesus speaking to him. And remember, his hand was withered. And he said, uh, Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the others. He stretched his hand forth, and it was restored whole and fully. That is how powerful our stretching can be to where the man was made whole. Understand what I'm saying to you tonight because he stretched and he believed and he had faith and he moved past, he was made whole. And that is the message that we can carry today, the bomb of Gilead. We can encourage those around us that if you stretch, you are made whole. Because that's how powerful Jesus Christ is. When he tells you to stretch, you can be made whole. There can be healing in your life. There can be restoration in your life. That when you stretch out your hand, when the holy anointed new direction comes alive in your
you understand how powerful that is? If you don't, then you've never walked around ailing. You've never walked around hurting. But when you have and you stretch past and his hand was made whole. His hand was made whole because Jesus Christ told him to stretch. Because Jesus told him if you stretch, if you reach a little further, if you go past, you will be made whole. That is powerful. It was withered. It was withered away. It was no more. Sometimes we feel like that. Like we're withered away. And we don't know how we're going to be made whole. But he is our sufficiency. He is the one that makes us whole. He is our lifeline. And when I say he, I'm talking about Jesus. And when you breathe in the spirit and you breathe in the word, then you are made whole when you're stretching. When you decide to go past, even when it doesn't seem easy, when it's hard, is he? When it's hard, and you don't know if you can move anymore, and your spiritual man's like, I can't take it anymore, and he says, stretch a little further and see what I can do. And see the work I can do through you. Stretch just a little bit more, and you are made whole. And there is freedom in that. When it comes to the things of God, I'm always looking for freedom because it is a place I want to reside. I don't want any baggage or crud or muck or mire holding me down, but I want to be able to be whole in him. I want to be able to be free in him and dance and sing with joy. Our prophet has said it. Before she handed over the mic, we are a people of peace and joy and laughter. That is who we are meant to be. Not that everything has to be perfect all the time. It does not. But she said it on Sunday. How do you react when you don't know? That got tested for me. How will I react when I don't know? How will, what will be your response when you are made whole? And there is a place God wants us to be. Go with me to Ephesians 4. I want to leave you. I know this message may be a little short and sweeter than normal, but I want to leave you with this. Ephesians 4 and 13. When you are made whole, this is the place he wants you to get to. 4 and 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When you are in fullness, you are whole. And what is that level he wants us to stretch to? You know, come on, RFC, come on, RFC, come on, RFC, when you stretch past. When you are whole, when there is the fullness of Jesus Christ in your life, you will reach the X level. You will reach the X level. You will reach the level of Jesus Christ. You will reach the fullness of him. When you are made whole, when there is his fullness in you, when you go past what you think you can, because God has put a strength in his people, we are not weak in this place. And when you decide to go past, even when you can't see in the physical, even when you don't know and you're bumping around, you will be made whole. There is a fullness in Jesus. When we all come together and the knowledge of him, when we know him, when his glory resides in us, then we are made whole. And we have his fullness. You are overflowing with the love and the image of Jesus Christ. You are overflowing with the power.
power of his blood. And there is a message that you carry. There is a message that I have been made whole. Can You can too. I have been made whole, don't you doubt. I am in his fullness. It may not seem like it now. The cup may seem half full. And you may have to stretch out to him. But oh God, he will meet you there. God, meet us there. And let us be full in your spirit. God, thank you for this ministry that teaches and trains so that we can be filled and full of your word so that we can be whole in you. No man can do what God can do just like our prophet has said. No one's ever loved me like God's loved me. No one has ever touched me and held me. Not in this physical form. Although I could feel it, no one has ever held me the way that God has held me. And that is the fullness. And that is the level, RFC. The wholeness of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Father. I pray today that something that I said encouraged your body, touched your people. God, and that we can walk around with that fullness, with that wholeness. That we can carry you, carry your son, carry your spirit. I just want to give you glory and honor, God. And thank you for this season that we're in. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. I pray that you feel that wholeness and the fullness of Jesus. And if you don't, please go search for it. Go seek it out. It's there. It's waiting. His hand is waiting for your hand. Even when it seems like you may not have a hand, Jesus said to stretch it forth and you are made whole. I love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you to our leadership, to our apostle, to our chief apostle. I give God all the glory and all the honor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was a powerful message. Amen. And I just want to say, you know, whenever you're not being stretched, whenever you are comfortable, that's a sign you're not being stretched. And when you're not being stretched, you're not going to grow. You'll stay in that stiff place. We need to always ask the Lord, God, stretch me. Put me in a place that I'm going to be uncomfortable. Because you know what? When you're uncomfortable, that means you have to trust in something higher than you. When you're in a place where you're comfortable, you don't have to trust in anything because you know everything. You're comfortable with everything. Everything's familiar to you. And that's not growth. God always wants us to grow. Amen. I know for my personal life, I never thought I was going to have another job. And God put me in that place. And I see some spiritual growth happening in me. And, you know, and I mean, I'm telling you, every time God has changes things up in your life, there's going to be good. He has good in plan for you. But sometimes all we can see is what we don't know is going to happen. It's called faith. We need to be the people that have faith. And just trust the Lord. And know that he's got everything in his hands. Amen. Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I'm International Evangelist and Administrative Vice President of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program today. And if you would like to help us take a revival around the world to our friends in Honduras, Mexico, Singapore, and Malaysia, this is how you can do it. First off, you can send in your checks or money orders to 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. You can also call in with credit card at 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. And finally, you can do it through the cash app. That's money sign RFC ROAR. That's money sign RFC ROAR. 
Thanks in advance for helping us take the flame around the world. Remember, we are a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God.